If you're building WPF applications, then there's no doubt that you've used bindings before. And if you've used bindings before, you've probably run into an issue where your types don't match. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to look at value converters that we can use with our bindings inside of WPF applications. Now, this will be a very simple tutorial, so if you're very familiar with how bindings and value converters work, you probably don't need to watch this one unless you just want to check it out, but this is intended for beginners to get started and learn all the basics about using value converters with bindings. If this sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now, let's jump over to Visual Studio and get some value converters going. To start things off, I have a very simple application here, and if you've been watching my other videos on WPF, then this is going to look very familiar, but if not, you can go ahead and check out the video above and then come back to check out this one. They are kind of building things in order, so this will help you get started if this doesn't seem very familiar. What I have on the screen is a very simple window, and it's going to have a label and at the top, so you can see I have a grid and then a label inside of that right at the top, and then this checkbox. What we want to be able to do is have this checkbox such that when we click it, it will toggle the label. What I've done is I've included the binding for show fancy text. And again, if you're not familiar with how bindings work, go back and check that video that I linked already. But I'm going to show you in just a moment that we have this show fancy text as a property on our view model. So if I go back into the main window XAML CS, you can see that this is the main window view model. I'm assigning that here on the data context. So that will all get configured for us. But show fancy text is going to be the property that we bind to. And that means, just to kind of prove it to you, you can see that I have true as the default state. If I go back to the main Windows XAML, I don't have the checkboxes check state set to true in the beginning. You can see in the UI, it's actually unchecked. But if I go run this, we should see that by default, it will take that state on the binding. So show the label is checked off and it's shown, but when I toggle it, right, we don't have anything taking place here. So the binding works on this toggle, but it's not taking effect on the label, so we're missing another binding. What we are missing is a visibility binding that we can put onto the label. So we can go look at the property called visibility here, and we can go put another binding. But the problem is that visibility itself is not a Boolean value, so doing this right here isn't going to work. Visibility in WPF is not a true or a false. And this is what you would have in WinForms and probably some other user interface frameworks, but visibility in WPF is actually tri-state, which means it's not is visible like a Boolean. It means visibility is visible, collapsed, or hidden. So it can be one of three values, which means a Boolean does not map directly to this property. We have a little bit of an issue. We want to use this property, but it's not of the right type. A very common value converter that we have in C Sharp and WPF is the Boolean to visibility converter. So what I'm gonna to do to start us off here is I'm going to introduce that. And the way that that works is that we would go add converter onto here, and then you need to be able to define your converter. So what we would want to be able to do is something like Boolean to visibility converter, but this is not enough. It's not enough because WPF and XAML in particular here doesn't know how to go find this. It's like, thanks for typing that, but like, what the heck is that, right? So we need to be able to give it enough context about where to find this converter. There's a handful of different ways that you can do this part, but what I'm going to show you is that we can go up to the main window, which is what we're in. I'm gonna to go to the resources, and it's really cool because Copilot is doing all of the work for me. You can see that it's put this in here. If I press tab, I'll explain what this is doing in just a moment. What we've been able to do, and it's a little bit wrong, but it, you can see that it's trying to reference Boolean to visibility converter from this namespace. This is the part that's wrong. And then you can see that it's giving it a key called Boolean to visibility converter. So when we want to go use this converter in our XAML, we can give it this name and it will find it and it's going to look for this converter. But I said that this is wrong, and it's wrong because this namespace, WPF Playground Converters, that's not something that I have inside of my project. So that converter 
doesn't exist there. Maybe we can see if the IntelliSense will go find it for us. Before we move on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have a course on C-sharp refactoring available on Dome Train. Refactoring is one of the most critical skills that you can learn as a software engineer, and this helps you continue to build upon applications that already exist, making sure that they can scale and have extensibility. I walk you through a bunch of various techniques and give you some examples that we walk through together to see how we can apply these techniques to refactor the code. Check out the pinned comment and the links in the description to get this course. Now back to the video. And in fact, by default, Boolean to Visibility Converter is being resolved. So when I hover over this, you can see System, Windows, Controls, Boolean to Visibility Converter. And a nice little test here is if I press F12 to jump to the definition, you can see that it's bringing us to a real class. So this is a real built-in thing. You can see that it's I value converter, and then it has the logic to do the conversion. So definitely a real thing. We're on the right track. And what I want to do just to show you that we can use a different key versus just the name here, I'm going to call it cool biz converter. So we're going to use this name as the key, and then I'm going to put it down here. And it's still not quite right because this syntax, and this is the part you have to pay attention to, takes a little bit of muscle memory, but you can't just put the name like this. We have to basically refer to the static resources that are on this XAML file. So you use this syntax as a static resource, and then you can see in the autocomplete, cool viz converter is there. So now we got this thing where we can Whoa, my keyboard. <laughs> we got this thing where we can get the visibility bound to show fancy text, but it's going to use the right converter to go from Boolean to visibility. Let's have a quick check here. I think one more thing that we might want to explicitly say, and I'm just gonna separate this out onto some separate lines to hopefully make it a little bit easier to read, is that we can explicitly say that we want this to be uh, one-way binding. So we want the visibility of the label to be read only, right? So the control itself is never setting the visibility on the view model, but it's only reading from the view model. Down here with the checkbox, it's a little bit different and we could be more explicit as well, but we could say binding, we could do mode, and we could say two-way, but it doesn't really matter. Two-way is going to allow for the initial state to be read in. It will allow for that. Or if something else was allowed to change that, then the uh, the checkbox will also update on its own. But we can just do one way to source and basically make it so that the checkbox is the only thing that's going to change that state. So just to call it out again, this initial state won't even be read. So we can just leave it like this. To quickly check where we're at, we have show fancy text we don't care about the initial state from here because I'm using one way to source on here. When we use the checkbox, it should now change show fancy text, that Boolean value, which should set it to whatever the check state is. And the visibility of the label should be mapped to that properly now because we are using cool viz converter, which maps to up here, a Boolean to visibility converter. So we should be able to change Booleans to visibility. Let's go ahead and run this. We can see that by default, show the label, that's the checkbox, right? It's unchecked, we don't see the label. So the checked state is set to false, but when I check it, we get fancy showing up. So now the check state is true, and then the Boolean to visibility converter is going to change a true Boolean value to visibility, which is an enum, it's going to pick the visible property. If we uncheck it, what it's doing is still using that same value converter. The check state is false. So false goes into the value converter and that will map it to collapsed. And that's why we actually see that it collapses the whole user interface when it's hiding the label. So a very simple value converter. Now that's all good and well. We're able to use a built-in value converter to do something that's very common in WPF actually. So if you wanna see how you can make your own value converters and that way you can map between different types on your view models and your controls, you can check out this video next. Thanks and I'll see you next time.